In the heart of Africa's past were the ancient civilizations of Ghana, Kush, Egypt, Carthage, and Aksumite once flourished, is where this video will transport you. In West African history, the Ghana Empire stands as a testament to the region's rich cultural heritage and economic prowess. Emerging around 300 AD, the Ghana Empire, often referred to as the Wagadu Empire, played a pivotal role in shaping the destinies of the diverse peoples of the Sahel region. This narrative delves into the origins, socio-economic structures, cultural achievements, and eventual decline of the Ghana Empire. In the vast expanse of the Sahel, where the Senegal and Niger rivers converge, the seeds of the Ghana Empire were sown. Around 300 AD, disparate tribes of the Sonic people, scattered across the Sahel region, found a unifying force in Dingasis. This visionary leader, recognized as the first king of Ghana, united the Sonic tribes under a common banner. The term Ghana, meaning warrior king in the Sonic language, was initially used to refer to Dinga Sis and later became synonymous with the entire empire. Under Dinga Sis's leadership, the Ghana Empire solidified its presence in the region. The strategic location at the crossroads of major trade routes allowed Ghana to control vital economic arteries, making it a hub for commerce and cultural exchange. Gold, extracted from the empire's mines, became a symbol of Ghana's wealth attracting traders from North Africa and beyond. The economic foundation of the Ghana Empire rested on its control of trans-Saharan trade. The Sahel's abundant gold mines, particularly in regions like Wangara, supplied the empire with vast quantities of gold. This precious metal became a coveted commodity, drawing merchants from North Africa, the Mediterranean, and the Middle East. Agriculture played a pivotal role in the Ghana Empire's economic stability. The fertile lands of the Sahel, nourished by the Senegal and Niger rivers, provided a conducive environment for cultivation. Staple crops like millet and sorghum thrived in the semi-arid climate, ensuring a stable food supply for the population. Culturally, the Ghana Empire was a melting pot. The capital city, Kumbai Sale, was a vibrant metropolis with well-planned streets, impressive structures, and a bustling market. Traders from diverse regions gathered in the great market, creating a rich tapestry of cultures and traditions. Kumbai Sale became a beacon of unity and prosperity, reflecting the empire's ability to embrace and integrate various influences. The political structure of the Ghana Empire was characterized by a centralized monarchy. The king, often referred to as the Ghana or warrior king, held both political and spiritual authority. The empire was divided into provinces, each governed by a local leader, and these leaders paid tribute to the central authority. Kumbai Sale, the capital of the Ghana Empire, stood as a testament to the empire's grandeur. The city's mud brick walls enclosed a labyrinth of narrow winding streets and bustling marketplaces. The air was thick with the sweet scent of incense and the lively chatter of traders from distant lands. The great market at the heart of Kumbai Sale was a vibrant kaleidoscope of colors and sounds. Traders from far and wide set up their stalls, offering a diverse array of goods, from exotic spices to shimmering gold. The city's architectural marvels, including the Palace of Dinga Sis, reflected the cultural richness and sophistication of the Ghana Empire. The cultural and intellectual centers within the Ghana Empire played a crucial role in fostering a sense of unity and shared identity. The exchange of ideas and the preservation of knowledge contributed to the empire's cultural vibrancy, leaving an enduring legacy in the collective memory of West Africa. In the rugged highlands of northeastern Africa, where the air is thin, and the sun beats down on the red earth, the ancient kingdom of Aksum emerged as a beacon of civilization. This is the story of the Aksumite Empire, a realm whose roots delve deep into the annals of history, leaving an indelible mark on the cultural and economic landscape of the Horn of Africa. The kingdom of Aksum, 
which emerged in Ethiopia during the first century CE, was a significant empire of the ancient world. Thriving for centuries, it controlled vast trade routes connecting the Roman Empire to the Middle East and India. The capital city, also named Aksum, boasted a peak population of around 20,000 and was known for its elaborate monuments, written script, and the introduction of Christianity to Sub-Saharan Africa. Situated in the highlands of northern Ethiopia, near present-day Eritrea, Aksum's origins are somewhat mysterious. It is suggested that people from the Kingdom of Saba, located across the Red Sea on the Arabian Peninsula, may have migrated to the area around the first millennium BCE, influencing the local culture. Situated 2,000 meters above sea level on a plateau, the city's climate, fertile soil and strategic location at the crossroads of major trade routes facilitated agriculture, herding, and commerce. Gold and ivory were key exports, and Axum engaged in trade with regions such as the East African coast, the Roman Empire, the Middle East, India, and China. The Aksumites were known for minting their own coins, following Roman weight standards. Aksum reached its zenith as a prosperous and stratified society. Its influence extended over Tigray, northern Eritrea, the desert, coastal plains, and much of the Red Sea coast. Expansion through warfare, including the conquest of Mero and Yemen, further expanded Aksum's territory. In the 4th century CE, Aksum embraced Christianity, becoming the first sub-Saharan African state to do so. King Izana played a key role, and Frumentius, an advisor and tutor to the crown prince, contributed to the spread of Christianity. The Ethiopian written language, G-E-E-Z, derived from the Sabaean script, was used during this period. However, by the end of the 8th century, Aksum's power had significantly declined. Factors such as the migration of the Bija peoples, loss of territorial dominance, and the rise of Arab Muslims in the 7th century contributed to its downfall. Environmental pressures, including soil degradation and decreased rainfall, further weaken the once thriving kingdom. In conclusion, the Aksumite Empire stands as a testament to the resilience and ingenuity of ancient African civilizations. From its humble beginnings in the kingdom of DMT to its zenith as a major player in the ancient world, Aksum left an indelible mark on the cultural, religious, and economic landscape of the Horn of Africa. Despite the challenges it faced, the legacy of the Aksumite Empire lives on in the traditions, architecture, and identity of the modern-day nations that trace their roots to this once mighty realm. Once upon a time, in the cradle of civilization, nestled along the banks of the mighty Nile River, there emerged a remarkable civilization known as the Egyptian Empire. This extraordinary tale unfolds over thousands of years, encompassing a rich tapestry of history, culture, and innovation that left an indelible mark on the ancient world. Ancient Egypt, one of the world's earliest civilizations, is more accurately described as a complex society ruled by pharaohs rather than an empire in the traditional sense. This narrative will encompass the span of ancient Egyptian history, highlighting key periods and achievements. Early Civilization and Unification, circa 3126-86 BC The story of ancient Egypt begins in the pre-dynastic period around 3100 BC when upper and lower regions along the Nile River developed distinct cultures. Over time, these cultures merged, leading to the unification of Egypt under King Narmer. This event marked the beginning of the early dynastic period and laid the groundwork for the Old Kingdom. The Old Kingdom is often referred to as the Age of the Pyramids due to the construction of iconic pyramids at Giza including the Great Pyramid built for Pharaoh Khufu. The pharaohs were revered as celestial kings and possessed great authority. The Old Kingdom also saw significant Hatshepsut, one of the few female pharaohs and 
Thutmose played key roles in expanding Egypt's influence. Amenhotep IV, later known as Akhenaten, introduced a brief period of monotheism centered around the sun god Aten. Tutankhamun, the famous boy king, succeeded Akhenaten and the subsequent pharaohs, including Ramses, sought to restore traditional religious practices and expand Egypt's borders. The Battle of Kadesh against the Hittites is a notable event during Ramses II's reign. Despite territorial expansions, the new kingdom faced external threats, including invasions by the Sea Peoples. Following the decline of the new kingdom, Egypt entered the Third Intermediate Period. It was characterized by decentralized rule, with a series of dynasties ruling over different regions. Foreign powers, including the Libyans and Nubians, gained influence. Alexander the Great's conquest of Egypt in 332 BC marked the beginning of the Hellenistic period. After Alexander's death, Ptolemaic rulers, descendants of one of Alexander's generals, took control. Cleopatra, the last of the Ptolemaic rulers, famously aligned with Julius Caesar and later Mark Antony in a failed attempt to resist Roman influence. In 30 BC, Egypt became a Roman province following Cleopatra's defeat. The ancient Egyptian civilization left an enduring legacy in various fields. In the ancient Mediterranean world, the Carthage Empire stood as a powerful and prosperous civilization, challenging the might of Rome and leaving an indelible mark on history. This is the story of Carthage, a city-state that rose to prominence, faced the challenges of war and politics, and ultimately met its demise. The story begins in the 9th century BCE when Phoenician settlers, led by the legendary Queen Alyssa, later known as Dido, established a trading post on the North African coast. This settlement would evolve into Carthage, a strategic hub for maritime trade. Its geographical location with a natural harbor and proximity to valuable resources laid the foundation for its economic success. Carthage quickly grew into a bustling metropolis, amassing wealth through trade and commerce. The Carthaginians, skilled sailors and traders, established a vast network that connected the western Mediterranean to the eastern part of the known world. The city's influence extended across North Africa, the Iberian Peninsula, and the islands of the Mediterranean. However, tensions with the expanding Roman Republic began to rise as both powers sought to dominate the region. The First Punic War, 264-241 BCE, marked the beginning of a long and tumultuous relationship between Carthage and Rome. One of the most famous figures from Carthage was Hannibal Barca, a brilliant military strategist who led Carthage during the Second Punic War, 218-201 BCE, against Rome. Hannibal's daring crossing of the Alps and his victories in battles like Cannae are legendary. Despite this setback, Carthage managed to recover economically and politically. The city's leaders, determined to rebuild their strength, turned their attention to the Iberian Peninsula, where they established new territories and resources. Hannibal Barca, one of Carthage's most famous generals, emerged as a key figure during this period. In 218 BCE, the Second Punic War erupted, marked by Hannibal's daring and unprecedented crossing of the Alps to invade Italy. The Carthaginian general achieved notable victories at Cannae and Trasimene, but ultimately Rome's resilience prevailed. The war ended with the Battle of Zama in 202 BCE, where Hannibal suffered defeat at the hands of the Roman general Scipio Africanus. The Second Punic War left Carthage weakened and burdened with indemnities. Rome, viewing Carthage as a perennial threat, sought its complete destruction. In 149 BCE, tensions escalated into the Third Punic War. The conflict was one-sided, with Rome besieging and eventually sacking Carthage in 146 BCE. The destruction was immense. 
the once proud city was razed to the ground and its population either killed, enslaved, or scattered. The fertile lands surrounding Carthage were salted, symbolizing Rome's determination to erase the city from history. Despite its fall, Carthage left a lasting impact on the ancient world. In the heart of northeastern Africa, where the Nile River winds its way through the arid landscapes, the Kingdom of Kush emerged as a powerful and culturally rich civilization. The story of the Kush Empire, also known as the Kingdom of Kush or the Kingdom of Marrow, unfolds along the banks of the Nile and encompasses a legacy that spans several centuries. This narrative explores the origins, achievements, and eventual decline of the Kush Empire. The roots of the Kush civilization can be traced back to the Neolithic period, with evidence of settled communities along the Nile as early as 8000 BC. However, it was during the Bronze Age that distinct cultures began to coalesce into what would become the Kingdom of Kush. By around 2500 BC, the Kingdom of Kerma had emerged as a prominent center of power in Upper Nubia. The Kingdom of Kerma played a crucial role in regional trade, serving as a link between Egypt to the north and the peoples of sub-Saharan Africa. Over time, the influence of Egypt expanded southward, leading to interactions and conflicts between the two civilizations. The Egyptians referred to the region as Kash, a term that the people of the region later adopted. During the New Kingdom of Egypt, particularly in the 16th century BC, Egypt sought to extend its control over the Nile Valley, including the Kingdom of Kash. The Egyptian pharaohs launched military campaigns into Nubia, eventually conquering the region and establishing a series of administrative centers. The Kingdom of Kush, however, retained a degree of autonomy. One of the notable periods in Kushite history was the 25th Dynasty, also known as the Nubian or Kushite Dynasty, which saw a reversal of fortunes. Around 747 BC, King Pi, also known as Panaki, led a successful military campaign northward, conquering Egypt and establishing the 25th dynasty. The Kushite pharaohs ruled over both Kush and Egypt for several decades, marking a significant chapter of unity and cultural exchange. Napatha, located in modern-day Sudan, became the capital of the Kush Empire during the 25th dynasty. The city thrived as a center of religious and political significance. The Kingdom of Kush, influenced by Egyptian traditions, developed its own unique cultural identity. The rulers of Kush adopted Egyptian customs and incorporated them into their own religious practices. The decline of the 25th dynasty marked the shift of the Kushite capital from Napata to Mero, ushering in the Meroitic period. Mero, strategically situated between the Nile's sixth and fourth cataracts, became a thriving center of trade and Meroitic culture, exhibited a distinctive blend of indigenous traditions and influences from Egypt. The kingdom of Kush flourished economically through trade networks that extended to the Red Sea, the Mediterranean, and beyond. Meroitic artifacts, including a unique script known as Meroitic script, attest to the cultural and linguistic development's economic prosperity. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe for more, and share with your friends. Your support means a lot.